Welcome to Around the Reel with your hosts, Aaron Carlson, Charles Lawson, and Samantha Hanna. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Nothing better than being on the air talking about Aaron going to the bathroom. I just want to make sure his mic is working here good. (laughs) Oh yeah, I can hear him. All right. All right, so... Hi guys. Hi. How are you? Welcome Mm -hmm. to Around the Reel. No, thanks, Chuck. Welcome to the 13th episode. Is it 13? Yeah. 13. You're number 13. How yeah. do you feel about that? Lucky number, man. Yeah. Friday the 13th. <laughs> I, I guess we should have asked if he was superstitious before we had him on the show. I know, right? Oops. No, he, he, we forgot. Not at all. Oh, no. Okay, good. <laughs> see? Yeah, see, black people like him and I, we're not superstitious people. Well, me? We just don't go in the water. Me, I'm losing and we money. don't go skiing. If someone tells me I'm losing money with my purse on the floor, I'm keeping my purse off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so so, I don't even care. Like, just in case. Just in case. I'm not yeah. superstitious, but just in case. I'm, I'm not what? superstitious, but you never know what works. Yeah. That's right. That's like, right. Yeah. I try not to step on the cracks because just in case. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just in case. Well. Um, got it? What's going on there? He is just Jesus fumbling with crap and making a lot of noise. She's holding my headphone cord in her hand, and I don't want her to rip my headset off. Fair enough. All right, that'll work. <laughs> Why'd you put it there? I just wanted to see how you oh thought about God. it. You know, Whatever. Just trying to be as close to you as possible, Sam, because, you know, you're within reach. All oh, right. A reminder. So, yeah. Well, we got a guest remote today. Yes. Yes. Remote from Colorado. Colorado. Yeah. All right. Yeah, man. So we got Antoine Dillard. It's Antoine, isn't it? That's how we say your name? Yes, yep. that is Yeah, correct. we already right. went over this. I didn't know. I was okay. I was outside you smoking the, the, the vape thing. <laughs> oh, you were outside smoking. The vape thing. Chuck said you were in the restroom. Port. No, the vape thing. Um, okay. yeah. I went to the bathroom, too. That's fine. I didn't want to bring that up. We don't have to discuss <laughs> details. We were just talking about where well, everybody was. You don't shy away from bringing up well, anything else, so. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Why shy away? So Antoine's a filmmaker. Yes. Be yes, making, making, am. yeah, making movies, man. That's cool. Good for you. Um, before we get into um, Antoine's story and to uh, get to know him a little bit more and the work he's done, we've got some uh, we, house cleaning, some things we got to talk oh, we about. Clean some oh. house, just real quick. Yeah, there's a lot. Of- so bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs> bye, bye. Are you? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you can get started downstairs for us. Uh no. No, that's what, not what I meant. We're cleaning house. So. Yeah, we're doing some house cleaning stuff. Like, I wanted to talk about last week's episode since Chuck wasn't feeling well. You guys heard that yeah. the audio <clears throat> quality was a little different. Uh, we had to rearrange things and move all our gear to uh, our house for Sam and I's. It and wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't COVID. I swear. I uh, know. I'm glad. Where it was a lot more quiet than it is here, but the sound quality was. Not. Well, we picked the wrong room in the house to we do did. the we recording. We picked like the biggest, so, almost open room. Yeah, John James was a good guest, and it was awesome. It was and fun. I just wish the audio was a bit better. And now that we've got Antoine on remote on Zoom here, you know, if, uh, if, I wish we could get better audio for you, but you sound okay. I hope people can hear you, yeah. Antoine. So yeah, I think so. I think yeah. so too. Man. We can hear and you. And people know what's going on with the yeah, I mean, COVID yeah. stuff and yeah, exactly social distancing. I mean, hell, I'm close to you guys, but unfortunately, I, <laughs> I should have just done a remote too. <laughs> but you should have. Family. You should have. <laughs> hey, why don't we just have him stay at home and he can remote, and then that way we can just mute him. Oh, yeah, fucking right. We just fucking. <laughs> and then we can actually have a conversation for once. <laughs> All right, so Around the Reel, we've also got a monthly supporter program that we want everybody to know about and, you know, to keep our podcast rolling and doing good and trying to get us to a, I don't know, better level of not only quality but content. We could use everybody out there that's listening to go on to anchor.fm. If you do that, you'll be able to sign up as a monthly supporter and there's a couple ways you can do that just by basically donating a monthly dollar amount and to what, our show. And what might those dollar amounts be here? Yeah. Well, they go as low as 99 cents, Charles, oh, all right. the way up to 9.99 a month. You know, depending on how much you like us and our show, anything helps, guys. So if you could um, just check that out or think about it, we'd really appreciate it because all that all that money goes to future projects we're doing and um you know, and just knowing that you guys are supporting us like that makes us understand too that everybody's at least enjoying 
what they're listening to? We actually have some awesome supporters, too. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's the shout-outs we were going to talk about. Sam, you want to talk about shout-outs? Sure, let's talk about shout-outs. The people that are supporting our show by donating to us monthly. Olivia. Yay. Thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Olivia. Our daughter. And John James. John James did it. Last week's guest. Yeah, last week's guest, who was a good guest, an awesome guest. Yes, he was. Who else? We've got uh, Ginger Bailey. Ginger. Yeah, Ginger supported us, too. part of our team, too. Local actress, part of our team. Yep, yep. And we've got Ben Thatcher. Mr. Thatcher is the UK from the UK listener, yep. and he'll be he a, is a guest film composer. Here coming up, so right? wait a second, if he's a, so, what is that in pounds? I don't fucking know. Oh Jesus! Okay, so oh basically, God. what we're saying is, if you th- if matter. you think Aaron's an asshole, you could donate a dollar a month. If you think Sam is amazing, then you can go ahead and give us a ten dollar a month. And if you're stuck in the middle and don't know what to go with, just go with me and give us five. It's fine. <laughs> I get the least amount. <laughs> Well, yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> I mean, it's appropriate. Oh, okay. There's your I, asshole. Sorry, <laughs> it came. <laughs> asshole gets the dollar. Anyway, that's some of the things we want to discuss, right? Is there anything else I'm missing? Um, I, as far as the shout outs go, I don't believe so. But okay. thank you, everybody who's supporting us and, and what thing. we're trying to do because yeah. that's cool. Yeah. And we love you for that. Yeah, it's great. And thank you for everybody who's listening. Um, just keep you. listening. And if you, as you hear our content, maybe you'll be inspired to support us as well. Since you don't have to pay for a subscription for your podcast, <laughs> you can <laughs> go ahead true. and pay a subscription for your favorite shows. Yeah. And thank you to our awesome guests. Like Antoine here. Yeah, yeah. That's that's being so quiet and waiting well, for us to finish. Well, he's listening to house cleaning. Well, we're he's cleaning good house. He knows I we're know. doing stuff. Okay. He got manners. <laughs> he's, a, he's a businessman. He understands. He Dog. does have manners. You should learn something. I'd be trying. <laughs> I'd be trying to learn. <laughs> that was you the, could teach him. That, that was, was the like quickest <laughs> turn to not swearing. You should learn some thing. <laughs> I was, yeah, I know. Why did I do that? I don't know. You, ladies I, in the room. You I'm trying to wash my mouth around all ladies. the time, and we never you understand. N- you want to know why? Why, Sam? Why do it's, you it's, censor yourself? It's called mm, respect. It's a respect thing. You now have respect for or maybe Aaron. I Wait just, a minute. Maybe I just don't don't want to get ranked on by my friend Drew. <laughs> Oh, because you're the oh, because you're the clean one of the group. Mm-hmm. That's right, mm-hmm. and the and, and I'm and the pure one. I'm always of the, group. the clean one. Yeah, I don't know what and that I, means. Yeah. Okay, so. I've got nothing right now. Speaking well, since we're talking about Sam, though, we should talk about the names. <laughs> oh, like, and that you know, also has to do with Drew. Yeah, well, that's fine. We can shout out to Drew. Um, shout but, out to Drew. But the thing is, is that Sam obviously has labeled us with these wonderful nicknames. Nicknames it's like Creepy Chuck. Asshole, Asshole Aaron. Aaron. So we were thinking about. I don't have a name. Uh-huh. Just Sam doesn't saying. have a name. <laughs> but these guys can't name me because that would. I'd end up with some crappy name like. Asshole Aaron or I, Creepy Chuck. Chuck. Shitty Sam <laughs> yeah. or Skanky Sam or, or some stupid shit sucky, like that. Sucky Sam. I actually See would what never I mean? have, would have so, thought of Skanky <laughs> Sam. That's kind of. So the better idea for me, anyway, is to go with. Uh, Stop chasing your tail, ladies. This is your dog, the, bro. The better thing to do for me is to have our listeners give me a name. And that's what we came up with. I feel like they'll be much more better, like, you know, the Savage Sam or... Stop, you know. stop giving them ideas. Let, yeah, let them yeah, know yeah. their own. Okay, so we're asking you, the... You really <laughs> emphasize Savage Sam. Because she I like that, that one, so... She wants so. That so bad. Yeah, yeah. I do. So or like semi-automatic Sam. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, let's just calm down <laughs> like, Give me something cool. <laughs> So, I want something cool. That's why well, I didn't ask ex- you guys. <laughs> okay. So since we've gotten that out, let's make sure the audience understands what we're asking of them. So everybody out there who listens to our show, if you go to our website at CCC, period. What? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just messing with you. CCCEntertainmentGroup.com. If you go there, you're going to find a button that you can click that's called the... Junk box. Junk box. On the junk box, you're going to be able to reach out to us with not only... Advice, um, questions. any questions you may have, things you'd like to hear on the show. Comments. Comments. You can also, though, give us a name for Samantha. Let's name this woman something great, people. Like something Some- that will resonate. Yeah. yeah. Sunshine. Sam. No, something. Something enduring Some that Aaron can like call her for Sam. the rest of her life. Right. No, something so we're gonna, cool. So we're going to do that for at least this <laughs> something week. Something cool. Like this, me. 
We'll do that this no, no, week. No. Okay, we'll have people. I know you're gonna, we're going to do that for the week, and everybody's going to throw out names for you. And then next week's show, we'll have a vote. We'll set up the voting system. So we'll take maybe the top three names that we get and then have the audience vote. So within two weeks, we'll have a new name for you. Sounds like fun. Well, yeah. hey, I hope it's good. Antoine, since we have you live on the show, how about we get you the first option? And why don't you give us what your um, nickname for Sam could be? Well, he hasn't listened to our show. So this he doesn't have even a know great idea. idea of, hey, hey, oh, just well, let, no, let that's a perfect. Okay. Yeah, let, him, let him talk. Okay. Right? He doesn't know you. He might I'm come sorry. up with the best one. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Get me. Ah, man, I have I have no idea. No idea. <laughs> maybe, no idea. Maybe serious Sam. You know, serious Sam. Serious Sam. Sam. Serious Sam. Isn't that a video game back in the day? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was Serious Sam, the shooter. <laughs> yeah, Dude, I've that's been no joke. called a lot of things though. Like, have, do you you have nicknames growing up, like from your friends and stuff, or your family? Like, no one calls really? me by my real it's, it's crazy. The like high school and college. It's all <laughs> just different stuff? It's like all what, different Name stuff. some of them. Oh, uh, man. Um, I've had, let me see, in high school, I was Ed and Edge. It's a funny story. That that was weird. Another <laughs> one, uh, college was Goo. Um, goo? Goo? <laughs> goo? Yeah. Have you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you guys ever seen My Brother and Me? I haven't TV seen show, that one. Old TV show on Nickelodeon. Oh, so, Sam would have. Yes, I think I do. Yes, I know. So, yeah, Goo. Yes. A, yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. So. Oh, that's hilarious. I, apparently, I look like that guy mm. in college. So. <laughs> I can even see it a little bit now. <laughs> I know. I love that. It must be the light eyes and the big smile. Is Why are the nicknames sense? always so like cringy and bad though? Like, yeah. I, I my friend used to call me Slappy, and then he got lazy and just turned it into Slap. Slappy. And then, Slappy? He, just, and then he just walked up and hit her. Me in high school. Yeah. The thing is, to like, this day, if I saw that dude, he would be like Slappy. <laughs> that's not a bad one, audience. You should listen to that. Um, no, don't listen to that. Mm-hmm. Well, here, wait, wait. Let me ask you a question really quick. If you're sitting here saying that nicknames are always so degrading, then why is he asshole Aaron and I'm creepy Chuck? It, why didn't you come up with something better? It, it, you don't do what she, you know. Um, it, don't do what she does. Just do what she says. You no, know, nicknames are supposed to kind of be something about the person, right? Like, am I wrong? That's I what nicknames are. I don't know. You know, you just. I like giving people I nicknames name. personally. Yeah. So, I don't know. so what are you trying to say? I don't know. I'm a, little, I'm a little creepy. Chuck, you're a lot creepy. So <laughs> <laughs> it just came. It came like. Blah, blah, blah. If that was actually true, though, my, my name, name would be like Johnny Lawrence right now. You know, from Cobra Kai. Johnny Lawrence is awesome. That's what oh. I'm saying, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he is about it. Yeah. Sorry, that's a Cobra Kai thing. You guys didn't watch maybe, Cobra Kai. I don't know. Yeah. Hash I, brown I, Cobra Kai. Johnny, Martin Johnny Lawrence, Lawrence, maybe, but the, no. <laughs> I watched the first episode. Okay. Did you watch it, Antoine? Yeah, LaRusso is such a jerk, man. Yeah, I, 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 I watched all of it. Man, it's good <laughs> stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's great. It's, oh. it's shame those kids, you know. <laughs> I know. Man, such a tragedy there, but uh, <laughs> they still fighting, yeah. yeah. At least the main characters are okay, right? That's what, that's that's what I'm saying. About. We don't want to spoil it. Sorry if you guys do end up watching it. It's fucking great. Yeah, you guys got to remember, yeah. you know, we, people great. listen to us. You have to say spoiler alert if you're talking about something that people are, that people are watching. There wasn't oh, no. a spoiler there's, alert. No, there, there's no spoilers there. We're just oh, saying no. that Johnny's badass. That's well, it. Well, it's like when you tell me about a movie. It's like, oh my gosh, Chuck, you'll never believe the twist at the end. So I'm waiting for the twist at the end. It's like, thanks, Aaron. Yeah, no, Just tell me to watch a freaking movie. All right, fine. Okay. Anyway. Oh, the boys is no joke too. I'm watching that right now. And if you're anywhere within the block of our house, you can pretty much hear it, so you don't really need to watch it. Because yeah. Okay, let's. Since Antoine's here, Antoine, are, when you're watching movies and television shows, being a, a black man oh, like you, I am, mm-hmm. do you this. happen to talk a lot during that movie or show? No. You don't talk either. You don't Thank talk you. to them. Talks it, Thank she, you. It drives me crazy. See, like, what Aaron? the fuck? What, See? We're supposed to be talking all through that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. That's what we do. Yeah. And, and that's Tonner, what are you coming know. to this the Northwest anytime soon? I'd love to go to the movies with you. It'd be a nice <laughs> I know. Experience. I'd rather I'd rather watch a movie with you than Aaron here. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, got to do the commentary. I admit. Our time. Aaron, you get Aaron, story, man. I don't want to miss nothing. I, just, I hear you. Thank what? you. But see, you gotta have well, both things going about. on here. You gotta use your peripherals. No, he's no, you literally gotta... he talks the entire time. But not only that, but he's taught each and every one of our children to do the exact <laughs> same thing. So it's like five people all competing to talk to each other, and you're like, how do you guys even watch the movie? Yeah, we do. Like you do. What do you see? We absorb it all. <laughs> or I mean, what do you Absolutely. hear? 
Got thrown the CCs. Ooh. <laughs> Like, anyway. see, I can't do that. My kids, I come home and my kids are watching movies and stuff, even movies I like and I know. And the closed caption, it's distracting. I, I find myself reading instead of watching the movie. That's why I can't do foreign films. You guys can't multitask at all. That's man. how I was at first, too, before I started watching a lot of anime. Then, you know, I got used to it. It's, 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 it takes practice. See, into <laughs> anime. A he lot of people are into that. Because anime. it's good stuff, too. Did you? Okay. I, I just started watching some of the uh, uh, Avatar, finally. Oh, the on show. Netflix, yeah, on show. That's fucking great. Legend of, Legend of Korra? Or the, the, old the, the old one. The old one that was on yeah. Nickelodeon first. Yeah, I know Korra I'm supposed to watch next, but I haven't done it. But it's good. I love that shit. It's good. Okay. And you know what else was good? The DC, uh, the fucking DC uh, animation movies. They're fucking crazy good. Yeah, they're great. They're, they're great. fucking great. They're better than the movies. The, the, Lately, I haven't been enjoying them. Though. I mean, there's too much Batman. Yeah, Batman's <laughs> in a lot. The ones I saw too. I'm with you. But the uh, one that uh, was that the one with the it starts off with the kid. The never mind. That's all right. Well, here, here. okay. Hi. I'm not I'm not a huge DC or comic guy, but doesn't <clears throat> Batman Batman and Spider Man? They're the ones that have the biggest as far as multiverse ideas for different shows. So is that why that the the market is so saturated with Batman and the anime I don't because know. of the different universes and stuff that they keep coming up with and. Different plot with the lines. Mul- multiverses and whatnot. Multiverses. Well, that's because of Flash fucking everything up. Well, Flash yeah, always Flash fucks point. everything up. That's why he has a good team to help him out. Yeah, but the cartoons, it's even better because Flash isn't a pussy like he is on a TV show. <laughs> Flash in DC can kick some ass. It's pretty cool. But he still messes up, though. And that Flashpoint. Yeah. We uh, want to know what you I want to know what you think, Antoine. Seen. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, we've been talking over Antoine the whole time, and then finally, when <laughs> Sam's done with me talking, she's like, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> Any opportunity to cut you off there, and, asshole, Aaron? And, Antoine, what do you think of the whole DC multiverse? Uh, is Flash just a complete screw-up, or what do you thought? No, I mean, it just, he, he lets his emotions get the best of him. I mean, you know, the Flashpoint storyline has been retold a bunch of times. And always he wants to go back and save his mom, and then it causes, you know, this, this, this ripple effect throughout time. It pushes, shifts everything just a little bit. And then you get all these, you know, these different universes, different Earths. It's, I don't know. It's just, it, it's crazy. Um, I don't think he messes up all the time, but I, mess, I think he messes up enough mm-hmm. where, you know, he just, he ends up making things a lot worse than they should be. He does. So what you're saying is he's like a normal person. Yeah, he is. He, well, well, he's like Aaron, kind of. It's so good. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, yeah. I can't. Oh. I just compared you to somebody cool. I know. You compared me to The Flash. <laughs> Screwed up. God, you <laughs> Screwed up on that one. <laughs> uh, two weeks ago when you compared him to Spielberg. I won't forget that either. I know. Why do I do that? I wasn't that? bad either. Because she knows it. This is all lies coming out of her mouth on the show that I'm an asshole. No, I think I'm a that, fucking god. I think that you um, do those things where you warp my brain and make you know make me say stuff oh, like that. Oh, now I got the force. Now I'm a Jedi. No, I never said this that. This is what I put up with with my friend never. Antoine. I never said that. All right, let's this give it, my daily life. Let's my give friend. Antoine the floor, shall we? We've been Tell us about, about you. Yeah, what's up, Antoine? Where are you from, my man? Well, man, I'm from a lot of different places, I guess. Uh, originally from um, Delaware, uh, Newcastle, Delaware. Um, after that, moved to um, to Philadelphia for college, transferred to then Arizona for college. Um, then for my master's, went back to Florida. Not back to Florida. Went to Florida, um, studied there, met my wife, then moved over to Colorado. I've <laughs> been here for the last, like, uh, 10 years. So a little bit of uh, – been kind of a little bit all over. Yeah, you have. That's not Everywhere good, but man. pretty much, like, over here where we are, the what? West Coast. Yeah. You? No? What? Never lived over here? Well, no. I mean, I have friends over there, you know, and I, I've, I've visited a couple of times, you know, to Redondo Beach and uh, went to Universal Studios a couple of times. But, yeah, I never lived there. Never lived there. Yeah, right. What took you to Colorado and made you stay? Ah, oh, man. Uh, I, <laughs> I came to Colorado during the recession. And it was... At, Great you know, time Florida in my life. life. Yeah, it was, it was pretty horrible. And yeah. um, at the time, I was, I was still in school. Um, and I got a job as a probation officer. So I was doing that. And um, it, crime went up. People were losing their jobs. It got intense and crazy. And at the time, my mom was here in Colorado. So she was like, you know, you're going to be graduating soon. Get out of there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Come over here. There's opportunities here. So, you know, after I graduated, um, I ended up getting married. And then I, me and my wife just drove drove to, to Colorado. And then we just started a life here. Wow. Cool. Awesome, so man. where did you meet your wife? <clears throat> I met her in Florida when I went to go okay. get my, you know, my uh, master's degree. And she but was just cool York, with obviously. going to Colorado? 
Yeah, she's like a free spirit. She's like, let's go. Oh, awesome. <laughs> at first, I was like, ah, yeah, right. Was and she then, you know, from Florida? No, she's from Flo- she's from uh, New Jersey. Oh, oh so she's used to being cold and awkward. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Wow. But it was weird because I mean, we were just a state away, Delaware, and New Jersey, and I mean, we touch, yeah. you know, states touch, and then we ended up meeting in Florida, which was kind of funny. Yeah, that is crazy. Wow, that's great, man. That's cool. How long have you guys been together? Oh, that's, a, that's a hard question oh. for a guy. I know, so uh, carry the two. Put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah, we've been together since uh, 2006. Okay. Oh, wow. Good okay. for you guys. It's been a little while. And, oh, you know, that's we got... like same. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah, have two. Same. Yeah. 2006 yeah, is when we... Sam and I met too, I think. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. talk as like, you know, fondly. Oh, for fuck's sake. Me? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe that's why I got that title, huh? And maybe. That's bullshit. I don't. I don't. I treat you good. Just now. <laughs> Ouch! It took me a while to train oh, your ass. Tra- it took me a long time. <laughs> oh my yeah, lord! You sound like my wife now. See what I'm saying, dude? <laughs> okay. 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 Fucking with us. That's so. good to know. Oh man! I trained you to be this way. You weren't like this when I found you. Right. <laughs> You got, and that's what you got to do yeah. when you're. You got to train these guys. You, you beat just us down long them. enough. We we caved. <laughs> yeah, just we like just, a. Yeah, we'll listen to what you. Just like yeah, a, all this resilience. Well, well, eventually, we just cave, man. Just, seriously, you just I got to abuse dogs away. It's about getting the credit we deserve for putting up with your asses. Just like a abuse <laughs> dog outside in the cold <laughs> rain with them sappy eyes. That's how we feel every day. Oh wow. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's violin shit. Yeah, we should be so playing some cheese and you. wine and everything. It's fucking so sad, sorry man. For you. Having Look someone get your back is like so sad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just want to be, just want to be me, man. You know? Yeah. So. I bet, I'm, you know what? I'm going to actually stop talking so much. I heard through the grapevine. We should. Oh, I should probably look that'll at my be mouth the shut. day. <laughs> anyway, so you. Uh, so this, you. This would be the longest, quietest show. I know. <laughs> Those are my, like my best fantasies when I wake up in the morning and I'm deaf and Aaron's just mouth is moving and I can't hear a thing. Oh, <laughs> so Antoine. A nice pick. I can do that for you. So when you got to Colorado, okay. is that when you started to get into filmmaking or did you do it before that? Yeah. You know, I, I got to Colorado and, you know, like I said, I, I was a PO. So I tried to get um, a job as um, a sheriff because I was trained to be a sheriff over there. Um but then, you know, they had this big, like, law hiring freeze, so I couldn't get, <laughs> my mm-hmm. transfer didn't go through, and I was kind of stuck doing a lot of nothing. Um, and then I ended up um, working for a um, digital signage company over here. Um, so I worked for that, worked for them, worked my way up to creative director, and then um, I had schools reaching out to me, wanting to come and talk with them and help them with their programs on, you know, how to help students uh, like uh, like to uh, form their curriculums around um, helping students prepare prepare for the you know for quote unquote real world <laughs> when when it comes to um, uh, just art in general. So I was helping them with that, and through that, I was able to make some connections. And I started work on um, my background is in my master's degree is in visual effects. So I started some work on independent films, doing just visual effects stuff. Mm-hmm. Very cool. And that's cool, yep, man. And then, yeah, from there, kind of just picked up, and now I'm you know doing my own thing, directing my own stuff. That's the way to go, man. So you started your own production company then too, didn't you? Yep, I did. I um, had some issues with the the company I was uh, creative directing for, mm-hmm. and they had, they had some financial issues. I ended up getting laid off, and then um, they were my first client. They wanted to keep me on, even though they couldn't hire me <laughs> as a as a, keep me on as a staff member. So that's when I formed Quantum VFX. Um, and originally, it was just you know doing motion design stuff, visual effects for you know anything I could get my hands on. Mm-hmm. I just turned into a um, production company as well for myself. Is all of your knowledge um, from schooling and stuff like that, or did you go on your own and learn or get yeah. better on your own? Like, <laughs> doing yeah, research, school. internet. I mean, there's a lot of stuff on the internet. Yeah. So that's how school Aaron a- got a lot of his um, oh, yeah. training. Yeah, I mean, school was, school was a good foundation. Um, it helped me learn other programs quickly. And it helped me learn what because a lot of interfaces are the same, um, except for you know Nuke. Nuke is insane, mm-hmm. um, but for the most part, interfaces are the same when you're working with editing, visual effects, whatever the heck. So that was a good foundation to help me with that. But I learned most of my skills outside of school. Okay. And um, the first project I was um, 
first project I was on was a nightmare. <laughs> um, but the first project that I was actually, I, I feel like I contributed to was a, a TV show called Inner Dimension. And I got to rub shoulders with other visual effects people that worked on, you know, Spider-Man, Day of the Tomorrow, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I got like on the job training. And that's where I learned a lot of my skills okay. and what to do, how to do and where to get certain resources and everything. So that's, Real school is a good foundation, but I learned most of the stuff that I know now, like just working with people and on the job training. That's how you learned. Yeah. Right. Very right. Cool. So when you say interfaces, you're talking about software and things like that, correct? Yeah. Like, you know, Premiere, Final Cut, uh, After Effects. I mean, all that stuff, it's just, it's pretty much the same timeline at the bottom. Uh, your, your media stuff on the left, you know, you got your stuff, you know, on the, on the on the top right you know it's, it's like the the format and how everything's set up is pretty much the same you know things are different depending on where you go right but the learning curve is a lot less steep right because i went to school and i got that foundation I got do you. you do you dabble with them all or do you find that yourself t- like geared towards one or push to use one or the other more than the rest um everything has i use different things for different uh, th- what they're good for like after effects i create all of my visual effects and after effects it's just the best way to go Mm-hmm. Most user friendly, easier. As far as editing everything, I use Premiere. Mm-hmm. It's just, mm-hmm. it's easier. Flows well with After Effects. So, so it just depends on what you're trying to do, as exactly. to what program you'll use. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what um, I kind of did the same thing. Now, I didn't have any schooling in filmmaking, but our school, my whole life, I've been a, f- a film fan, movie guy. Mm-hmm. So, in a way. You you kind of pick up on the craft by watching movies if you watch them over and over and over. Oh yes, you definitely see how they're created. So, and 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 that rationale when we started to get into this back in two thousand what two, maybe yes. something like that, Chuck. Yep. Um, you know, it was basically me learning as I go. I had no idea these editing programs were even out there. And then we stumbled across them, and I gradually started to pick up things here and there until YouTube hit. When YouTube hit. And during that recession time that you're talking about is when I started to really, I had more time and I was also very angry about life, right? Because we lost everything. Um, But in my depressed state, I found Video Copilot with Andrew Kramer. I love that guy. Yeah. He taught me so much. Yes, (laughs) right? And absolutely. I went to his site and I redid every single tutorial on my own that he that managed awesome. to do and his technique works. You know, he, he'd have this project that he was like, Hey, you're going to blow this guy's head up or you want to make this or make that. He'd show you how to mm-hmm. do it. But he always said these techniques that you're doing, you're going to be able to pick up stuff. So when you have your own idea, you'll know how to do it because right. of all these exactly. little techniques. Yeah. And, and you know what? It fucking works. Yeah. It works. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. So I learned after effects because of Andrew Kramer. That's and, awesome. Yeah. yeah. He, he, that's the greatest school you can go to without having to pay for it. I think if you I, want to be a visual effects guy, yeah, I totally agree. He's the stuff that I, and, and he has, he, he sells these pre-made stuff and it's great. Oh, God. I used, I, I used almost everything on my first, my directorial debut. Mm-hmm. And it, it, you know, it's just, it's phenomenal stuff. It's great resources and he shows you how to do it. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah. I think you, between that and lynda.com, it's just epic stuff. Epic it's stuff. Yeah. It, it helps you as a, as an artist to be able to sell some of the things you're trying to sell when you think you couldn't do it in the first place. There's like, no way I could do this. You know, I can't yep. even make a gun look like it's shooting. Right. But holy shit. Look, Andrew Kramer put out action essentials pack. You know, you I, just I have that. And yeah. I still use those muzzle <laughs> flashes. Oh, fuck yeah. You just dro- drop in your muzzle flashes, you know, and screen it and blend it with the yeah. shot and you're good to go. So it's, throw, yep. Throw a couple of shot, uh, shot um, solids in there for lighting. Oh yeah, lighting. absolutely. And you can, yeah. you, you can sell, you can sell that stuff. So, um, when we're talking to filmmakers in general, creating stuff, I think that's, these tools are good. They can mm-hmm. help you make movies. Well, and absolutely. those people are, are more, they're so important that like him who, who takes the time to do that stuff for filmmakers who are trying to get their stories out there and make their movies Yeah, that don't yeah. know, you know, don't have the experience or don't know what they're doing. It's, it's inspiring and it makes you want to, when you know stuff, tell people about it and help people that are trying mm-hmm. because oh, yeah. we've all been there. I think as artists, everyone starts, you know, there where you're scared, you're timid, you don't know stuff. You're just, you don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. You, you know, you love what you do and you know, you want to create. But you just don't know <laughs> anything yeah. really, and yeah. it takes people like that that put that stuff out there for 
for us that actually inspire and help us Absolutely. grow so much. So, well, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, no, Kramer. That, yeah, Andrew Kramer's a shit, <laughs> and I, others that do that stuff. Yeah, you know what's fun yeah. about the way he did his show back then, and and once he started getting into the element stuff, I haven't watched him since, but I need to because I really want to learn that stuff still. Um, oh yeah, he uh, he made his show entertaining. It doesn't feel like yeah, you're yeah. watching a tutorial. He's he's a funny guy. It's just a good good yeah. good. Um, if you're trying to make something and don't know how to do it, check out videocopilot.net. Andrew Kramer. It's great stuff. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So when you got your um, effects company up, what was your goal? What were you trying to accomplish with that? Man, I had a lot of goals. When I first started it up, it was an end to a means. You know, I wanted to support myself mm-hmm. and, and to be able to um, do what I need to do, like just kind of live the dream, whether it was on a small scale or not. But I did have some issues with clients after a while and they started to implode. And it, it was, you, I'm sure you've dealt with clients before. <laughs> they want you to do the, the most amount of work for the minimal amount of pay. Sometimes you got to chase people down for money. And mm-hmm. other times it's just, it's just, uh, they, they don't, they don't know when, when, the, when it's done. Right. Know? I had some guy like call me like weeks later. Hey, after I've already been paid everything, Hey, can you make this edit? No, we're done. Yeah. Deal's done. <laughs> we're, yep. we're, it's, it's Services over. are rendered. <laughs> it's, yeah, oh my like, gosh. You, okay. You, so this is, this is where the business. Yeah, yeah exactly. This yeah. is where the business guy takes over. It's called a change order. Or an additional <laughs> service document. Oh. Well, yeah, so there's that. Can, but Yes, I, mean, I can absolutely take care of this for you at this fee. Right, or you can be right. like, motherfucker, did we finished. We're done. <laughs> or you could just I, be yeah. an asshole like Aaron. And, <laughs> that's, that's a, you know. We got to do something new. I need to fix it. I'm going to charge you everything again. I'm already moved on to somebody else. I'm like, what the fuck? You said we were good. No, so, but it's yeah. too bad that people want more. I mean, they don't. I think that people just in average on the average people that don't do artistic things, they don't realize what goes into it and yeah. what you pour, what you everything that you put into that stuff. And so they don't to them. It's it's not to us. We know the value of it. But to them, they just don't. And that's why they I think they well, just they, assume that we can just. Go in there real quick yeah. and do this and yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And they don't understand. Which that is fine. It I mean, takes, you know, well, it that, took me a day to do that five seconds of. Yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too, is the fact that, I mean, people in the industry should know. It's not, it's, yeah. you know, they don't. No, it's the people it's, that it's aren't one thing that it's one thing are usually if, the problem. Yeah, if it's one thing if you're doing something for a client, like if you're working and creating somebody's commercial or something like that, and they don't know. But if you're a specialist and you're dealing with somebody who a director or a production company something like that they're gonna know mm-hmm. your dog's freaking out again i know Stop. i have no idea why unless there's somebody here so excuse me one moment i'm gonna go kick the dog no you're fine bud yeah Don't we got you kick the dog. no it's fine we, we got we got him. you're good we'll keep it rolling we can run this show anyway yeah it's 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 a difficult i mean just being an artist and just in general is a it's a difficult world out there as far as there's so much competition and there's so much talent so it's intimidating just by yep. itself and then when you get into the part where you're trying to make money that's a whole nother <laughs> you know yeah it just it was it, it became overwhelming and it was just it was it wasn't fun i spent too much time doing things i didn't want to do yeah and, yeah. and not enough time you know what i mean so it just yeah. it just became a task so after that you know that some circumstances happened i ended up dropping the clients and you know i'm like you know what let me just do what i love to do so i went and got a day, got a day job you know uh that i work nice now right <laughs> <laughs> but um, I got a day job uh, to take care of the bills, and then I started doing, you know, doing this for for me. Started Thank doing visual effects for for, for other people until it got, you know, to the point where I had my own ideas and I wanted to do my own thing. Because even that got crazy. It was almost like dealing with clients. And mm-hmm. like, now I'm off to the races, man. And and my first film, Rise of the Avalanche, won awards, and I was just like, oh. and it feels, feels good. good. Yeah, it's good, right? <laughs> Yeah. No, that's good, yeah, man. That's very good. So, yeah, you, let's talk about your awards. Um, you've done you've done quite a few film festivals, haven't you? Or just yeah, um, I think I, I think right now I have like um, ten wins and twenty seven nominations, or something like that. Yeah, um, but yeah, I've I've done a lot of festivals. I've been a judge on a on a festival, you know, before. So um, I, I run that. <laughs> <laughs> run that festival circuit ragged. <laughs> That's <laughs> really right. cool. Have you have you ventured outside of your area to oh, film yeah. festival wider? So I go ahead. Oh yeah. So um, I haven't <clears throat> haven't been 
to any other film festivals outside of um, Colorado just because I got kids and you guys know how that is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure. I have an eight year old and then two year old twin. So, it's, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's a, everything has to be scheduled and planned. Yes. Um, but I have, I've been to, been to festival, festivals here um, and they were great and the people were great and it was, it was an awesome experience. Um, so it, that, that was always a lot of fun. But in out of state, I haven't done it yet, but I do plan on doing it. I just submitted. Um, well, not just a minute, but Crazy Weapon 5, my latest film, I submit it to uh, Sundance, which I'm pretty positive it's not going to, you know, they're, they're super big. That's a big one. That's a big boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. You know, that's, yeah, you never know, which is why I submit it, but man, sure. it's, it's That's awesome, wonderful. though, that you did, that you, because me, I, I get intimidated about stuff and I just don't do it. So I think that's cool that you did it. I mean, that, that it in itself is, yeah, is just cool. Yeah, yeah. You, you definitely believe have in to yourself. Have that. You got to believe in yourself. You got to have a spine. Yes. You got to just and do it. Believe in your and work. In those times where I don't, man, my wife pushes me, and she, mm-hmm. this yeah. is good. Yeah, she's my. She's so detail oriented and so critical right. of my work because she wants it to be good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a lot of times where I'm like, yeah, this is good enough, and she's like, no, no, it's not. Like, you're gonna <laughs> another couple of weeks on this rotoscoping this gun Fuck so that. i know um, fucking rotoscoping jesus christ oh, oh. it's like watching flies fuck it's the worst thing you could possibly do so how my... can i cut this scene out oh i can't <laughs> I got I'm, to... I'm just gonna oh, zoom in more on this and get the arm out of frame so i don't have to show a <laughs> just, muzzle shot and just sh- and do, a, do a big off-screen flash <laughs> oh god it's brutal i remember those days yeah. hey Aaron, can we brutal. i'm rotoscoping okay i'll talk to you next brutal. week just brutal frame. i'll see you so I'll yeah she's, she's... <laughs> i know fuck, i wish we I had a green screen that it. day <laughs> Yeah. Please, please note, women, that we just complained about about five minutes ago. This is you that we're thanking now for being always having your backs. As <laughs> no, 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 I heard no, that. No, I heard that, and no, I was gonna. You know what? That's cool because <laughs> we don't get enough credit as women that tell you we're honest with you guys. That's, <sighs> but us, we support you, us partners. There's so, creative yeah, women out there too. Shit, you're a creative woman. What are you talking I about? I am. Yeah, yeah bro. He support you. I this do. I'm trying him. to teach you how to have a spine. Backbone. I believe. Yeah. You well, got to believe. That's not the way to put it. Well, I don't no. have to teach you that. No, I got that. Yeah. So I'm giving some of it to you. I have, I'm more than enough. Do you think? <laughs> didn't we already, yeah, you have more than enough. Didn't we already give him a rib or something? Do we have to give him part of our spine too? I don't know if I can spare my mm-hmm. spine. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> no, but it <laughs> helps to have people that, that believe in you. I mean, it really does. Yeah. When you're an artist, especially someone that believes in your believes in your work so much that they... Stand by you. Right. And Aaron's very lucky to yeah, have a couple of people know that <laughs> I am through thick and thin. I've always been there because we believe in his stuff because he's good. That's awesome. What he does. Yeah, exactly. yeah sure. Why not? I mean, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> hey, people, you've yeah. been here longer than I have. So yeah, bro. Yeah, but I don't, have to, I don't have to lay in a <laughs> bed next that? to him uh, anymore. Yeah, yeah bro. I mean, she, pushes, um, she always pushes my stuff from, from good to great so that's cool that's yeah. what you need um, that's fun and it's and she's part of the reason why i submitted the sundance cool. <laughs> well good for, um, for and, good for and you the, man in the big festival so yeah yeah no you need that push well Everybody shout does. out to your wife yeah what's your wife's yes. name yes <sighs> natasha shout out natasha. natasha natasha thank, shout thank out you natasha. natasha that's awesome man good for you yeah, hey, so, so, yeah so, she so, definitely she yeah she definitely gets me there so cool um and and i mean yeah from there it's like you know i would just on a roll, just trying to slow down. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you, and you guys have probably been there before too. Like once you get ideas, you, you know, you you finish one project, and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I got this idea for this other great project, and you just keep rolling and rolling and rolling. Yeah, there's so, too many um, sometimes. Yeah, it is, and, and sometimes it's like, you know what? Uh, maybe I should just one a year. No, 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 I got another idea. Two a year, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. And then everyone works at their own pace and does their own thing, but. For me, it was just, if, even now, just trying to slow down. And yeah. Did not do so many at once. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome ride. Well, you got to have balance still. It's hard, though, when you have a creative yeah. mind and it's always thinking of things and stuff. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's hard to figure out which one to even do sometimes. You know what I mean? Because I like them all. So I don't yeah. know what to do with my time do i write on this one do i do i do the you know like we talk about our our should we do our storyboarding for the project mm-hmm. we're getting ready to shoot or do i just wait on that and start writing this other one and finish it i mean you never know what you're fucking wanting to do you just gotta kind of pick and choose i guess and be lucky well antoine you're <laughs> yeah. a you're a, a, a day job 
or nighttime job guy too, right? <laughs> And a family yeah. guy. Yeah. So how do you guy. break down your time? That's one of the things that Aaron and I were just talking about yesterday is like, okay, pick a day that we focus on something. So whether it be podcast, our next production, time to write, mm-hmm. time to shot list, get ready for the next movie. Documentary you know, day. Documentary yeah. But this days. stuff isn't easy to do with a life like exactly. a family. So what, and Antoine, what are some that. things that you do to try and balance everything out and find time to be creative while running through your craziness? Yeah. And having young I, children. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just prepare prepare and plan um a lot of the stuff even when i when i film i plan it like uh, the following year get my vacation time together you know make sure i, I get the actors all the scripts and everything make sure oh, i got wow. the babysitters going so it's just it's just super a organized of... <laughs> yeah and i've had yeah. people tell me yeah people have told me you know you I, this is the most organized project i've ever been a part of i'm like yeah because i gotta be i can't my time is valuable <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. i can't I can't stop doing what I love to do, so I got to plan accordingly, you know? That's so cool that's, that you were able to figure it out. What that's, are your What are your production times yeah. usually like? Um, like, you mean like the uh, filming? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, I, my first feature film, you know, the last one I just did, Crazy Weapon uh, 5, which is not the fifth movie. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> but, uh, we you, did you could it. always count we down and keep going. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know that's the plan. That's the plan. The, the oh, next sorry, one, if you know, is called Crazy Open Four, the second movie. Oh, that's cool! <laughs> that's I love cool. that. So it's that's, like Sharknado almost. That's unique. <laughs> that's cool. That's yeah. fun. So yeah, so I mean, we I, I I'm a part of this um this filmmaking group on on um on Facebook, and one of the, uh, one of the guys were like, you know, how long does it take to shoot a feature? And um, I've heard you know stories about Tyler Perry how he, he just bangs it you know in and out like with yeah. Him, an insane amount of time like just using every bit of time he he has and planning it out and getting it done and i was able to do the same thing you know i shot crazy weapon in i think like four or five days nice um That's crazy. and we just we went there we got everything set up we had people practicing you know in other rooms while we were filming and then you know getting out there rehearsing i gave everybody the script six months ahead of time so everyone knew their stuff right and we went in there we did everything in one or two takes and we were we were out wow that's good, man. So you're you efficiently just good. Crack that whip and keep everybody going and focused and all of that. Because you, when you're yeah. working with actors, it can be difficult yeah, to do. It's, yeah, and that's why I've, I'm very picky. You'll see in my films, I use a lot of the same actors because my thing is I got to have people that they just want to have fun. Like, and my sets are fun. I, we go on there. I, you know, I get a pizza. We talk. We hang out. You know, everyone helps me set up. Everyone helps me break down. Um, it's like it's it's almost like a little you know a little AV club or something <laughs> you know yeah a little right. community we, yeah exactly we just yeah. go and we have a good time and after we're done it's it's cool you know I've gotten so many people say you know even with the for the small rules if you ever want if you ever need anybody again let me know you know I mm-hmm. I want to do this again and it's always it's always a good time and I feel like that's a lot of the films that I see and a lot of people that I, I've talked to they get you know actors that don't necessarily know each other, which is fine, but mm-hmm. they don't spend a lot of time together, just kind of hanging out, you know, between takes or whatever and building that, you know, that chemistry. Yeah. Because right? when you build that chemistry off set, you see it on set and you get a much better yep. film, a much better product. Yeah. It's so, important. It matters. We have the same philosophy. Here. Exactly. Yeah, we yeah. do. So it, that's kind of our entire awesome. thing, like building a group of people that all just love what we do and want to, do it Mm -hmm. (laughs) then Mm -hmm. they're excited about it as we are so that we get that kind of camaraderie going on with people and then they want to come back and do it again and yeah Yeah. you build a team and when you find people that are helpful to your team you hang on to them what what do you call it chuck yeah it's it's great yeah and then it's much easier to work with each other you have natural chemistry yeah and the film comes out better for it and you can count on them and you don't have to worry about letting you get let down and Mm -hmm. yes oh my gosh that was one of my biggest fears the first film i actually had a lot of people on (laughs) was uh rise of the avalanche 2 uh uh, revenge from the shadows Mm mm-hmm I was so afraid that there were going to be people that just wasn't going to show up. I was working with a lot of new people, gotcha. but they were all recommended by people that I've worked with before. So I kind of trusted that. Yeah. That helps a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Was um, it people you're using as extras or was it the actual um, speaking parts or what was it that you were most concerned about with that? 
it was speaking parts. I mean, and, and it's a lot of I don't do um, I don't do table reads okay. or anything like oh. that. It's just like I feel like if if you're willing and you want to do it, I can work with you on set. And it, and there's not a lot of you know bad habits or people thinking that they you know uh, should do it another way. There's no there's no any um, preconceived anything. Sure. Because we go on the status like okay, this is what the character's feeling. This is how I want you. And, I, and sometimes I'll act it out. And a couple times I've fallen. <laughs> it's becoming a tradition now, I guess. Uh, <laughs> when showing actors like what I want to have happen. Right. So um, it, it just it works out so much better after a couple takes. It becomes so natural, and and they're able to get it exactly how they need to. That's fun. Good job. Yeah, I remember seeing uh, when I first ran across your work. It was Rise. <laughs> when i when i watched that one and that was fun uh the visual effects you did Thank in that you. were actually really very good you did a good job with those i was I was, I was like man this man, motherfucker put in some work on the visual <laughs> effects on this short <laughs> so it looks sharp and then i i managed to watch crazy weapon last night so awesome. that's, it was entertaining. So thank you for making it. It was super fun. Uh the guy the actor you had playing Spencer that i love that guy. <laughs> Carlos. Yeah. That guy's a nut, man. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> Um, I work with, um, there's, oh man, she's a phenomenal actor, Ty, um, Ty Ross. Mm-hmm. Uh, she, she was in a crazy weapon, not a crazy weapon, but in Captain Powerful. Okay. And, uh, I, I was able to, to, you know, kind of hook her up with someone else. And then she did a, a TV show, Long Walks on the Beach that I helped produce, um, a romance comedy. And she met, uh, Carlos on that production. Okay. And she was like, oh my gosh, that's one. he is so funny. He was having his crack up in between takes, and I was like, "Oh my gosh, this is great!" Because you know, when you do a comedy, it's like it, it can't be forced. And if you're a comic relief guy, you got to be funny. You got to yeah. yeah. have good comedic timing. You got to it has to be natural. And that's what I so noticed with him. His timing was really good. Yeah, yeah. he's he has crack up. Did you watch all the way to the behind the scenes? I didn't watch any behind the scenes. No, I did not. Oh, I, I was okay. just sitting there. I was laughing my ass off at the end. It was too funny. But uh, how did how did when you're filming in the snow, man? How'd that go? We haven't filmed in the snow oh, before. Gosh, that the, was the crunchy, crunchy snow. <laughs> Fuck. Mm-hmm. Dude. It was it was it was crazy because I, me and my wife went and scouted that location like months ahead of time and we checked the weather and it was supposed to be nice and sunny. And have you guys seen uh, Mortal Kombat, the first movie? Yeah. Okay, so you know that scene where uh, Johnny Cage and um Johnny Cage and Scorpion are fighting, and it's like little skinny trees and everything. It yeah, like, yeah. Looked, Get over here, right through the woods, and looked, the thing flying out. Yeah, yes. love it. Yeah, it looked just like that. It was, oh man, it was, it was great. Okay, and it was off the mountains, and it was it was awesome. So the the week of the week before, it was like, all right, it still looks good. We're gonna have we're gonna do the scene in the woods, and it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. And then the day before it snowed, Colorado is so weird. Like it'll <laughs> it'll like, <laughs> it'll say it's sunny the next bullshit. day. <laughs> exactly and i was like oh my gosh so we couldn't go deep in the mountains like i wanted to to get that scene like i wanted okay and it was snow everywhere and i i felt like three times <laughs> oh my up. gosh yeah <laughs> like that's what are you okay yeah i'm fine i knew it take, um, it take the fall home. It take the fall save the camera right the things we go <laughs> was, through for the dip, the yeah, beauty was, of our shots <laughs> yeah and it was it was crazy because i sh- we shot in the snow it was freezing i know i bet and we did have yeah. a, a heater tent so everyone was huddled in a heater tent heater tent uh, between takes i think it was like i mean it's colorado we're in the mountains right and it's snowing mm-hmm. right. so it was like eight degrees it was so oh. nice. wow um, cut yeah no <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it was so we couldn't go deep in the in the woods like i wanted to we had to stay closer um to the foothills and then we and we shot the last scene instead of like you know shoot out in between trees mm-hmm. it was in like this little like uh like brick building know, kind of thing kind of yeah deal. yeah yeah <laughs> when it, it worked out great but um it was an experience shooting the snow like it was really it was really intense i bet it was man Especially yeah being that, that high up yeah was, so. crazy crazy well good yeah. job getting it done that's what that's Thank what's you. most important you yeah. finished it and your crew too good to, they did good work man that's awesome how do you um how do you get your distribution like what what is your plans for distribution when you're doing these things? I know that you've got that one on Amazon Prime, but do you do other things to get your projects out there? So I was looking um I, there's not a lot of you know independent <laughs> distributors now mm-hmm. ever since the whole distributor thing happened right it was insane yeah um so i I hit up Linda and she seemed pretty interested in my work, but she only dealt with uh, feature films at the time. Now you're talking about so Linda over at Indie Rights, correct? 
Yeah, yeah, yep, indie yep, film yep. rights. Yep, Everybody just right. says London. Everybody um, knows who she is. Yeah, we know her. Yeah, she's well, gangster. Yeah. She's good. <laughs> she's awesome. Yeah, she doesn't fuck around. If you do indie yeah, films, she was you know. Super nice. Yeah, she super is. Nice. She um, is. so um, she she uh, she liked my work, but she only dealt, dealt with um uh, fe- uh, features, not short. So I had to kind of wait on it. And by that time, I was finding other places. You know, O Prime TV. Oh my gosh. That guy is one of the hardest workers I've ever met ever. He's amazing. He has a great platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and he hit me up on Twitter and then I I used him and it's been even the royalty checks are, are bigger there. It's it's been great. And then Amazon had their their program through um what, what without a box? I'm not sure if you remember that. No, I don't. Um so without a box was used to be it was a it was a it was a place like Film Freeway where you could submit to film festivals. Okay, got it, yeah. So if you signed up through Without a Box, there was this program where you could get your stuff on Amazon as an indie, as indie filmmaker. So I was like, oh, this is amazing. So I did that. And after that, I'm like, well, if I'm on Amazon already through this program and I'm able to, you know, get on um, Oprah TV, I'm, I'm good to go. So I just stuck with that. And then even when I did my feature mm-hmm. um, and after I did my feature and I heard about what happened with Distributor, I was like less trusty over... Um, just someone like not saying anything wrong with Linda or any film rights, but just a third, you know, a, an aggregator, you know, having yeah. control over all of my stuff. So yeah, I just tackle it as if I can do it myself. I think that's the best way to go. Keep no middleman. I mean, no anything else. And that's just that's just how I how I uh, how I see. maybe I'll change. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. In the future, yeah. depending on how things change, but for now, I think that's the best way. Self distribution so, works for you. Yeah, that's nothing wrong with that. I'm I'm curious about the OP Prime. TV is that what it's called? That platform? Yeah, O Prime TV. O Prime TV. It's um, it's it's two thir- it's uh, two fifty a month. All the independent films you could possibly watch. I mean, I think the only um, only criteria is, is it had to have won, won the award. Okay. Uh, wow. So you just submit it there, and you know the guy who runs it, Sal, is just he's an amazing dude. Okay. Um, he loves like. I've dealt with a lot of and talked with a lot of distributors. Um, some some try to rip you off. Some are sure. are, are good people. Yeah, they're dirty. But this guy, he's so passionate about independent filmmakers, and he's so passionate about. He does all the marketing too. Mm-hmm. You probably see that on my on my social media. Absolutely, but, yeah. On your Twitter feed, I see yeah. it all the time. Yeah. Yep. He he markets the films himself, so you don't have to do anything. He um, puts everything out there. He 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 busts his butt, man, and it's it's. Wow. It's a great platform. He's he's trying to get an app for it, but for now you can just watch it online. Go to O Prime TV, yeah, or I think it's O Prime TV, and then just stream away. Okay, you know? all right. So he's got a good base going on of people that actually enjoy indie films that have signed up for that a script, subscription based platform, basically, right? Yep. And okay. It's, yep. It's only independent films, and it's it's a great platform. Yeah, I would love to do something like that too, because you know our goal when we made the Outrider was to. You know, just get as m- the biggest audience uh, that we could maximize our views. Just we knew we weren't going to make any money from fucking Amazon. They suck. You know, they they don't pay yeah. nothing. They rip you off. Dude. They rip so you bad. off bad. But they have this Horrible. huge base of subscribers. Right. We were getting a payment in eyeballs. Yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. our goal to to get more people to see our work was our goal, not the value money wise. Exactly. Yeah. So that that was our goal for the Outrider, but. Our next couple projects going about a way different because, you know, we, we've made a name for ourselves a little bit and we've got a, a smaller audience of people that are following what we're doing now and our company's work. So it's kind of like, okay, so that worked. We didn't make a shitload of money, but we didn't spend a lot to make The Outrider either. So yep. it's like it was a, a good experimental film to see where we're at and what we could do. Um, but now if we're looking at distribution from the future, yeah, it's, it's definitely things like that you're talking about where you can go out there and find these decent platforms where people will actually help pay you a little more revenue yeah. for the work you did. And, you know, the indie film market, they will pay it to see it. They will. Well, a question I yeah. have for you, Antoine, because we don't really do a lot of the um, film festival stuff. I've always felt like we should do more. But does – does doing those and and getting those awards in those help you when it comes to um, getting your stuff out there with other people or on other platforms or that sort yeah, of thing? It, I mean, yeah. It um, the biggest thing with the awards and why I keep doing them is why I keep running the festivals. It's 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 notoriety. You know, it's right. when I did my first film, um, it was so hard. 
to get people to work with me because I wasn't proven. And, you know, even my second film, I, I was able to get some people to on board, but not too many, you know? So once you've um, won awards, it really helps then with that. Stuff. Yes, yes. And after that, I had people coming to me. Okay. Um, what seeing seeing my advertisements? Hey, man, I'd love to be a part, you know, of your next movie. I'd love to be a part of your next film. Um, so it, not only is it easy to get actors, it's um, um, it's easier to um, to secure uh, better locations. It's easier to um, attract people um, uh, like these, like you know, like people like O Prime and other um, independent um, the, the, the distributors that distribute film. You know, because uh, there's a lot of and you probably you guys probably already know there's a lot of noise. Everyone's doing this, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 hard to um, to kind of see what's good and what's bad, you know, based on how people market or whatever. And being an award winner is a good way to be like, okay. Legitimize. Yeah. Exactly. So so you mean that I just can't put my face up there and it's going to sell stuff? That's what Aaron thinks. That's <laughs> how he thinks it goes. Only for and... people who might not know you. I mean, seriously, bro. Like, you, look, I, unless you look I, like I Samuel even Jackson. <laughs> bro, <laughs> <laughs> And don't even say you look better than that. Don't even say it. Samuel Jackson's the man. And not to mention, he'd come over here and whoop his ass if he said he looked better than him. Yeah, Samuel Jackson will fuck around. (laughs) So, uh, Antoine, what are your budgets like for your features? I know that you have been growing, uh, much like we have Mm -hmm. been doing. So are your budgets growing with each production? Are you keeping it about the same? How are your budget lines look? Um, My budgets are pretty – they're pretty – they're they're growing. Um, And it it really depends on – you know what I do. I'm I'm always about when I'm writing my script. I'm thinking smart. Um, I'm thinking about what locations I can grab. You know uh, what connections I have. I um, currently I sit on the board of directors for um, uh, Open Media Foundation. Open Open uh, Media Foundation, and they are a group in Colorado that part of what they do is they help independent filmmakers. So they rent out space equipment. They teach lessons um, as far as you know, like what. And Andrew Kramer does. So they do all these little things to help the independent film community. So I was able to, you know, through networking and meeting the owner and him taking a liking to me and everything and working with their, their marketing team um, to gain, to uh, get in a good position where they asked me to, to, to be on their board of directors, help run their company. So now I have, you know, access to, you know, uh, resources, more resources, than I would have if I didn't. So now it's like, it cuts my cost, it cuts my budget. So I don't have to spend so much money on finding a green screen room or finding a, a big, you know, conference room or, or whatever. So it's like, it's just using the resources that I have to keep costs down. Um, networking, is, is, networking's important. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, it's, it's the best, it's the best way to go. So yeah. they haven't necessarily risen with each film. Um, but I've, I've, I've been able to do more, with with uh the more research that i've the more resources that i've gained over time so you gain you've you get rapport with people and they offer you what they have to use as opposed to you know going out not knowing and paying somebody to use the same or exactly i mean there's a you know the, i don't know if you guys use peerspace.com but you know that's a place where people for independent filmmakers to go rent out space and you can rent and oh, they have you wow know, so people go on so, there and rent out their their yeah, whatever they you, have. It, exactly. So wow. like, it, if you go there, you can. I mean, it's, it's almost like I wouldn't say a Craigslist because it's a lot nicer than that. Mm-hmm. But it's a place where you know it's <laughs> it's all over the U.S. You you go there, type in your zip code, uh, put in what you're looking for, and then you can rent. You know, someone has a basement for rent. Hold you on, man. Oh, you, wow. you mean we don't? You don't have to just go and steal shots. You can actually. <laughs> you, you, no. don't, you don't steal shots. You take advantage of an opportunity that you have when no one was around. It's not stealing. It's, it's just. Yeah. So let me get this straight. Just quite, yeah. My my face can't sell the, the no, company, Aaron, your and face and you can also rent. Play- Jesus Christ! I'm doing this all yeah. wrong. Yeah, man. That, that, that's I never heard of that. That's, 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 no, that's that is cool though. So if you're looking for like like if you want to do an old town and you want like a. Uh, Say like a, a the western thing. yeah western thing, and yeah. you want like those old looking buildings. You can go on there and find See that you sort can of find some. thing. Okan- Okanagan County, yeah, Okanagan. Yeah, yeah, you can. And there's okay. there's actually a place in I wanted I wanted to do western. There's a place in Texas where they have that just for filmmakers, but oh, wow. I haven't got around to getting there. That's but cool. yeah, I mean, you can go there and you find interiors, exteriors, and the prices range from twenty five an hour to you know two hundred okay. an hour, depending on what kind of space you need. What's the website again? It's a uh, peerspace.com. Okay, thank you. 
Very cool. Um, yeah, great resource. And um, so, I mean, that, that's that's a good place to go. And then, you know, with with the the connections and the people I was able to to meet through, you know, going to the film festivals, going out there talking to people, um, I'm able to secure locations through other means as well. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like yeah. through, you know, Open Media Foundation and you know other places like that. So. Yeah, it's just it's because I've I've seen other filmmakers where like every you know and, and that's pretty common I think every film you know you want to go bigger you want to go badder so spending yeah. more money <laughs> yeah uh, bigger locations you know yeah. bigger names mm-hmm. well so, and stuff like locations yeah. can just limit you and what you want to do and it it kind of kills your story a little bit from what you vision or what you oh, want yeah. it to be. It can. You, you got to adapt, If you though. don't, yeah. You just got to adapt. Well, that's one yeah. of the things I th- yeah. that you said I thought was interesting because that's one of the things that I always tell Aaron, too. Is like, dude, don't limit your story by what you think we can do. Write your story however you see it. I mean, if, you see a, if, you, if you're if you writing a story, I mean, you might be writing the script for a movie we're making in five years, not next year. Oh, yep. good, yeah. That's so good that's point. one of the things and I tell Aaron. And that's because you made that comment about, you know, thinking ahead and knowing what you might be able to get and what you can't. Yep. Um, but So that yep. was just and curious. That, yeah, yeah. And, and that's exactly what I do. It's like I'm writing a script now. Um, it's, it's, it's so big. It scares me, <laughs> but every movie scares me. Yeah. Uh, but, um, it's, it's called house of Ra, and it's, it's a kind of an off, off planet kind of deal. It's a mix between into the badlands and, um, star Trek and, it's uh, like sci-fi the, the aesthetic of like, yeah, exactly. That's so, going big. Sci-fi. Yeah. That is going big. Yeah, it's, yeah, it is. And it's just, it's, so I'm writing a script, I'm building the world and it's like, okay, this is what I would, I, I have, uh, I, I have a, like a, I think call like a concept sheet or whatever. And I'm like, all right, this is what I need. Right. And this is what I, what can I do right now with mm-hmm. my money, my resources, everything, what can I do right now? It may not be the best thing to say, maybe I can, you know, run out a coffee shop or whatever for like what a hundred bucks an hour, make sure everything's tight, get in there and out in an hour. But realistically, I would love to get like a huge green screen room somewhere where I can build all the set or someplace where I can have a set built. So I'm writing a script and I'm like, okay, this location needs a big set and that's what I want. But if I can't do that, then I'll go and rent this coffee shop or whatever. Right. So I, so no matter what I do, I'm always finishing my feature. I'm always finishing my movie. Um, and I'm, you know, dreaming big, but thinking realistically. So I don't get, okay. I don't get ahead of myself. So you kind of have a backup plan is what you're saying yeah. for what you're at. Exactly. I mean, you have your actual vision and then you have, well, if that, if I can't do that, I can do this and have a plan B. Yep. That way it's out. It works. It looks great, but it may not be as grand as I wanted it to be. Does, it, does this mean I should stop thinking about building our studio? No, no. Please build, build our studio. <laughs> no, build it. No, build it. Yeah. please. Please. Yeah, that's our goal too, man, is to have that same type of, you know, um, production studio to be able to go and do that. And that's actually something Chuck is working on for us. We'll see if that ever happens. And you'll be able to find it on peerspace.com. <laughs> Please join us for rental. <laughs> I think cool as an shit, artist, man. you build most of your character, though. I, I really do believe in the struggle to get over those hurdles of, yeah. of money, the money hurdles and all those things that you have to... You have the guts to go and ask somebody if you can use their their area that you want to film at, or you know, you just have to. It it pushes you to think outside the box and be even more creative to try to figure out how can I do this. Yeah. You know, when exactly. I yeah, because there's so many barriers and stuff you know that you run into roadblocks as especially a filmmaker. You need yeah, to be. You, uh, you have to be creative. Yeah. Yes, you do. I watch. Yeah, I watch a lot of behind the scenes. Like that's like that's where I live. Like if I if I get a movie, I'm watching the behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's just especially the old stuff, man. Like George Lucas, you know how we came up with all these things, and it was we don't know how we're going to do this. And yeah, then, I had no idea. So, you know, oh, fuck it, I'll build it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. everyone yeah. started oh somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like just keep just keeping in that mindset where mm-hmm. like you may have this grand plan. And you may not be able to get what you want to get, but don't think that your work's going to be any less as good as it would have been right. if you were, you know, just as creative, just as creative as you are now. Yeah, where you need to go. So, I mean, he built all that stuff. He didn't. He, he couldn't have you know giant model X wings. You know, so yeah. he had little toy X wings. Right. Yeah. You <laughs> work. You got to work towards that. You don't just all of a sudden have. Everything. No, he made it work. He made <laughs> yeah, it work. Exactly. He's making it work. It's getting your story out there and your stuff out there and doing what you love to do is the important exactly. thing. Yeah, when we did our last feature, the Outrider, we had to go and it was the first time we actually reached out to places too, like you're saying, with locations and whatnot. And, you know, one of the scenes we were 
trying to get was a police station, an actual police station to film in, right? Mm -hmm. And what was cool was, you know, in our mind, we kept thinking too, okay, well, how can we sell a police station if we don't actually get one? How can we do this? So we had that backup plan. But, however, yes. Chuck, made the, Chuck made the connection. He, he made the a call. Real, real he one. got the police department to let us film in their fucking headquarters. With them. Awesome. With them, bro. <laughs> they were in our The film, cops were yeah. there. Now, I was a little nervous, you know, yeah. being black and all. But yeah, I <laughs> Wow. Sorry. I'm sorry. But <laughs> I was there. You know, we, we got it done. But we also got shot down, too. I mean, we wanted, you know, there was a church, a need for a church um, in one of the scenes. And, you know, we, we couldn't, you yeah. know, get that. I mean, we had to improvise a lot because churches were shutting us down all over the place. But when you're trying to do a, a religious action horror movie. Yeah. I mean, when you're <laughs> talking about yeah. all the all the everything questionable and yeah. controversial about religion sure. that's pretty much our film so yeah churches weren't all about you know yeah come to our place yeah. <laughs> use our church yeah. no they weren't all about but it but it was fine because <laughs> i prayed about it and god told me to just steal the shots no but we that's what i did that's what i did i stole the shots. <laughs> when we couldn't get what we wanted time to shoot <laughs> when appropriate right yeah well <laughs> yeah we just can be be a little sneaky Mm -hmm. came to me yeah, in a dream. It's funny. I, I remember asking you about that, too. Um, I was like, you know, how'd you get this police station? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, needed, I needed a police station for Crazy Weapon. And, you know, you saw the film. I had to cheat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, made, I, I looked at, uh, what was that movie? What was that show? It was a show. Um, gosh, what was that show? Uh, 24. 24, yeah. 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 So I had, I was like, you know what? Maybe it'll be in the future and it won't be practical. I won't be a police station that we see today. But something like in 24, where it's basically just kind of like office building. Sure. Office-y kind of. Yeah. And, you know, everything's kind of that blue tent and there's mm -hmm. no real windows. So I was like, all right, we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, you sold it too. <laughs> so, you, know, what, yeah, totally. you know, the big forum areas you guys were shooting in uh, had a ramp going down. And you oh, guys, yeah, yeah. Okay, so mm -hmm. where was that film? Because, I mean, I looked at that and it had some background offices. I was like, hey, that could be, that could be a police station. I mean, it, yeah, it, yeah. it looked I mean, it. You shot, sold it. Yep, Open Media Foundation. I mean, <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's, that's where I shot that at. And they, cool. they have a big um, conference room. Okay. And like a big little uh, area where there's a fireplace and everything. So I didn't make sure the fireplace wasn't in the shot. Got everything else and just editing it all together. Just editing it all together. Yeah. It sold it, man. No. Yeah. I didn't know any different. I thought it was, oh, you got a police station too. I mean, that's how it looked. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Yeah. And you know what? Stock footage is your friend too, man. Oh, like, hell there yeah. was. Mm -hmm. For uh, uh, Captain Powerful, mm -hmm. I knew the burning building. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't go around burning buildings. Yeah. Right. So, uh, <laughs> Not without a permit. Yeah. Well, yeah. An or a jail sentence. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I went to, um, I think I found some guy. And he, he, goes, he goes around the world. He takes video footage of the strangest things. And I was like, how much for this? I need this you could have just come to the West Coast because, like, the whole West Coast is burning right now. So, <laughs> yeah, like, you can get some, hey, like, that, hey, free footage of fire. He's got shit <laughs> fire in Colorado, Or smoke. <laughs> Not as much as here. Well, no, no. We had this conversation while you guys were out of the room before we started. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, we had. Why are you talking to other people? Because <laughs> you, um, you guys left the room. Shit's going down, bro. <laughs> Shit's going down. Man. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'm so, we talked. This one. This I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Antoine here, you'll appreciate this. Quick story time. So we got the oh, police no. station, right? Prepare yourself. The gym that my wife coaches at is owned by one of the sergeants from the Geek Harbor Police Department. Uh, four years, five years ago, this same officer, or sergeant, officer then, was the one who arrested my son for shoplifting <laughs> at Kohl's. <laughs> Wow. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have name dropped. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. And sorry, Isaac. I mean, son. Yeah. Uh, ah, shit. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, so that was my in. Was this person who my wife now worked for and had arrested my son? Um, yeah, that was our in. That was our conversation that got everything started. And I was like, man, I'd love to be able to film. When do you want to do it? I'll hook you up with the chief. So I wrote this very nice formal email, which apparently I wasted way too much time thinking about because he was just completely laid back. And um, <laughs> they were like, yeah, here, you only can't shoot in the main open front room areas. That's it. Yeah, we had everything. Everything access. And you know what? I wish we would utilize more, but why? We didn't need it. Exactly. But still, it was yeah. just the idea of us being there, which well, was and, cool. And collaborating with people, because everybody's got something to offer. I mean, everyone does. So when you collaborate with people, you can share things. You know, you can do this for me because that's what you do. And you, mm -hmm. I can do this for you because that's what I do. And 
if you are willing to do things for people, they're, they're willing to do things for you. Mm-hmm. Yep. What that's are you willing so to do? True. Chuck, Sorry. Well, let's not make this creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there he goes, he everybody. There he goes. Sorry. Earning his name. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't he, know why they do that. I just ask well. simple questions. That it goes through everyone Stop else's mind. Stop it. They just don't open their mouth. Oh, I'm out of coffee. That's okay. I am too. Hey, we're over at the hour mark already. How are we doing? Oh, Everybody's wow. got good questions Wow, already? it's gone fast, huh? Yeah, it's yeah. been fun. It's, it's been fun talking to you. It's super fun. I haven't seen him look at his watch once. I know, he's not bored oh, at all. Oh, well, it's not his job to pay attention to that now, is it? No, I just meant he's not bored. He's our guest. He needs. He gets to <laughs> chill, sit back, and just relax. So before, uh, what, what project are you working on now? What are you prepping for? Um, Right now, I'm kind of doing two things at once. I'm uh, post-production in Citizen Blaine. Okay. Uh, is that another say, short film? Yeah, it is a okay. short film. Okay. I, I, I end up doing I for some reason I always do short films to warm up for the bigger projects. That's okay. It's good. Um yeah. So I'm i I'm doing that movie and it's it's about a a, a guy who's dealing with uh, PTSD, um post traumatic stress disorder. Mm-hmm. Fresh out of the army and he's uh he keeps getting waking up. <laughs> People keep waking him up while he's trying to get sleep and uh, you guys will have to see the rest. Okay. No, it <laughs> sounds interesting though. You got me. Yeah, I, I, I want. No. You have to be careful how you sell a short. After, I mean, obviously, it's a short, so yeah. you can't you know, talk about it too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You it's a good premise. Yeah, give it's, the whole damn thing away. <laughs> it's really good. It's really emotional. Um, oh, I'm that's still cool. Working with my composer to get get things done, and it, it, it's it's awesome. Well, good um, for you, also, buddy. writing my next feature, House of Ra. Like I told you, um, it's it's big. So mm-hmm. I'm still working yeah. on the, the World Bible and, and, and Cliff Notes and everything like that. So. so you got a lot of stuff going in, in the works and stuff. And you're still a family man and got a job going. You're doing a lot. That's cool. Good for you. Struggling. Good Struggling. for you. <laughs> it's it's inspiring. It is. Thank you. No, you keep you keep it going, buddy. That's what it's all about, man. Just keep yep. keep pushing forward. Don't let the stuff or anything ever try to stop you. You can't let it stop you. You know, no. nope. yeah, I may have asshole tendencies, but I am for a reason. <laughs> well, well yeah. fuck around. We gotta get the shit done. We gotta get it done. If you ever yeah. need an asshole, Antoine, I got one for you. <laughs> you should, I think <laughs> everybody and, has one though. And Antoine, he's kind of a dirty asshole. I'm a shitty one. And that brings up the fact that I got a creep too, in case you ever need one of those. Yeah, but well, I wonder what we're gonna have in a couple <laughs> weeks. I mean, what kind of? Oh, what are you gonna have for me? Yeah, you're gonna have a. Something cool, like mm-hmm. a, something cool, Sam. Yeah, That's kind of boring. Like a no. Savage, Sam. something cool. <laughs> she really, really wants savage. So I'm bad. trying to plant that in everyone's brain. Dude, if she gets Is savage, like... Sam, I quit. I'm just literally going to quit. Come on, guys. I get, sa- show. <laughs> I get savage, Sam, because I'm savage. <laughs> yeah, no, and Aaron's no joke. Yeah, uh, no, yo, I'm, I, nah, yeah, nah, fucking yeah. No, I broke the record. Now. I wonder Speaking. how many times I've heard that in since I've been with Aaron. I wonder how many times I've heard that actual like, well antoine you haven't listened to the podcast no before joke. yet have you this is your first actual time doing it so you're going to go back and listen to some after this right oh yeah definitely oh, okay so <laughs> in, all, in all of his fucking so, free time because you know he's not doing yeah because he has so much of that well, no, he's, going got, he's got uh, the technology in his ears he can just put that in and do shit and that you is still the cool listen thing about a podcast is that you don't need to put your <laughs> full intention into it because you can just do pick a, up stuff here and there. multitask and but, but what's exciting oh, yeah. is he has no idea what's about to happen. You have no idea about what what There's the music. cringy it's kicking shit in. is going to go down it's right about in. now. Welcome to the last big three. Yes, this is the last big three. I'm, I'm Brett sorry. Armstrong with you today, and we've got our new contestant, Antoine Dillard. Antoine, nice to have you on the show. Let's give him a hand of applause. Oh, my God. Antoine, have you ever heard of the Poor last big Antoine. three? <laughs> no, he I'm hasn't. Go on. No, he hasn't. You didn't know this was a poor thing. No, Antoine, let me explain. As your host, I'm going to be asking you three questions. Three big questions about what you would do with your last day on Earth. Hmm. Antoine, are you ready? All right, yeah. I mean, I mean what, he said assuringly. I'm not convinced. I'm not. My last day, or just be? <laughs> this is your last day on Earth, Antoine. This is so, a premonition. Oh, yeah. You're okay. That is kind of creepy. Could you imagine? <laughs> is it really? Mad? What do we I'm have scared? for her, Johnny? <laughs> do we need to take a commercial break? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Antoine, your first question. Okay. I'd be scared. <laughs> Antoine, your first question. <laughs> Which John Carpenter movie? 
do you watch on your last day on Earth? Oh! Hmm. I mean, the easy answer would be Halloween, but um, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess Halloween. Why not? Halloween uh, is not a bad answer <laughs> at all. Great answer for you. All right. Antoine, question two. What animal do you visit at the zoo? Eagle. Wow. An eagle? Yes. All right. That's a Wait, powerful well, answer. Why the eagle? I need to know why the eagle. Oh, no, animal. Girl. Well, the first time I ever went to a zoo, I saw a bald eagle um, in real life. You know, of course, in real life, I went to the zoo. Um, but it, <laughs> it stood in front of me. I think it was like maybe six. And it stood in front of me, and it was taller than me. These things, you know, they get like five feet. Oh, and dude, it just opened its wings. Dude, that's some and bullshit. And the wingspan was insane. <laughs> Fuck yeah. that. I'm like, going to get you. trying to intimidate me. Dude, you are not the normal black person. I would have been running my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Big ass dragon eagle. <laughs> shit. Oh, back to our show. And the last question. And the last question for you. Ooh. Are you ready? Yeah. What celebrity do you meet? If I could raise him from the dead, any celebrity? Any or celebrity anything? on your last day on Earth. Fair game. If you want to walk around with a zombie, feel free. <laughs> they have to be Dwayne McDuffie, man. Dwayne McDuffie. Guy's inspiration. He's done a lot of really cool things. Yeah. And Great. he broke my childhood, so. Great answer. That <laughs> all right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Antoine Dillard on The Last Big Three. Tune in next week where we'll have a new special guest with us. Until then, think hard, because you're thinking hard anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for playing that game, Antoine. See you next week. <laughs> anyway, that's our right. show. I think it's don't think and drive. It's think hard because you're thinking anyway. And I just try to fuck it up because I know Chuck doesn't like it. <laughs> that's my job, though. I, I know. I'm playing off of you. Whatever. Uh, you're, stealing, knew, you're stealing my material. You got good I don't material. like it. You I never content. knew a pop filter could make such a good headrest. I know. It's good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, Chuck do, sleeps there often. So, yeah, do we have any more questions for Anton before we uh, call it a show? Anton, um, I, have, I have a question for you really quick. Do you yeah. ever have trouble sleeping, being as busy as you are? Oh, no. Is it creepy oh. time with Chuck? <laughs> it's creepy time with Chuck. Well, let's hear it. No, I'm not getting no, creepy. Man. I just asked <laughs> the man a freaking question. Okay, let's Anton, hear his answer then. do you ever have a hard time sleeping, being as productive and always doing stuff as you do? No man, I drain my body, man. So I get, I you know, I get off of work at eleven, you know, go to sleep, wake up, you know, at six thirty, get my son ready, work out, you know, get on with my day, take care of my little ones, and then going to work. So it's just uh, training your body. So don't get tired, don't have a hard time sleeping. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. as you drift off to slumber this evening, then let me remind you of a quick story. Um, the uh, Phantom Killer was once a horrid, horrid creature of habit and he has a vicious habit of actually going around and slaying families <laughs> creepy time which i told so you as it was coming. i tried to warn you so as the phantom killer walked through the room <laughs> exiting the bedroom from the mother's room he couldn't help but notice the teenage daughter swimming in the pool he watched her swim lap after lap through the window And then after a while, he slowly slid open the sliding glass door. He steps outside as she stops swimming and just floats there in the middle of the pool. He slipped himself inside of the edge of the pool, floated and swam underneath her, and slowly rose to meet where she was floating innocently. He quickly reaches forward and wraps his hands around her mouth, his legs around her body. He blows out all of his air and they sink to the bottom together, where he holds her until she doesn't move anymore. Antoine, have yourself a very good night and sleep well. (laughs) Creepy time with Chuck. (laughs) (laughs) Not only is it awkward, but it's (sighs) creepy. The stuff of your nightmares. Hashtag faith based. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hashtag cancel Netflix now, bro. <laughs> sorry about all that. I'm just sorry about all that just happened. It's all it, it was it was all fun, and then as sorry as she is, it was still her idea. 
It was my idea. It was. <laughs> I was like, why don't you just, you know? By the way, when why you don't we have a segment to prove to everybody why I call you creepy? Joe? <laughs> that's. I think he just proved it. Yeah, that's <laughs> there that, are, that right there. There, there guys. are twelve thousand three hundred and sixty-seven um, ways to kill a person that I have thought of over the years, and so I do serial killers really well. Yeah, he's not bad at it. Not at all. You yeah. have a future in the slasher, man. Yeah, he's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, <laughs> you should hear slasher. some of his. That's one of the screenplays he's writing right now, actually. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. the Phantom, anyway, the Phantom everybody Killer is copyrighted by Carlson Pictures and CC Entertainment Group. Any kind of use of uh, stories heard on this show is particularly protected by copyright. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's why I don't call him Cute Chuck or anything like that. He's, I call him Creepy Chuck. Now, now. He hey, brings the call- creep. But, but try, try not to giggle yeah. through story time. I know. But I tried I'm to. sorry I couldn't help it because it was so creepy that I just <laughs> couldn't help it. Too far. I really couldn't help it. This is the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. No that script. I have to listen to. Well, Antoine, tell us uh, where can people find your work, man? What what uh, avenues of social media do you got? That kind of stuff. Where can I point um, people? I got a little bit of everything everywhere. Uh, best place to go, honestly, is uh, quantumvisualeffects.com. And from there, there's a hub. You, you you can look at the movie and you click on wherever you want. So it takes you to all the pages where you can watch the film, um, social media for the film, the whole night. Awesome. Awesome. So that's oh. the best way to go. Best way to go. All right, buddy. Well, there we go. That's Antoine Dillard, everybody. Filmmaker extraordinaire. Check his stuff out. He's a, he's a creative guy and, and working really hard to make some good content for everybody out there. Just like uh, he should be doing. You're talented, brother. You keep it up. Thank you. Yep. Right. Very inspiring. Yeah, very fun stuff, man. Good Thank job. You. Thank you, Antoine. Very nice to meet you, buddy. Yep. Likewise. You yes. guys have a good one. Oh, man, you too, buddy. All right, we're going to close it out today, Sam. All right, I can do that, I think. So tune in next week if you would like. And we have another remote from Los Angeles, Brian Wynn, we have. will be our guest. So tune in to hear all about Brian. All right. Sounds What exciting. he's got going on. Cool. Should be exciting. Absolutely. And if you want to be a guest on our show, go to our website, cccentertainmentgroup.com and click on the what click on the link for guest scheduling. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm mumbling all of a sudden. And so yeah, I think that's it. You already took my junk box thinking thoughts of whatever yeah don't forget about junk box on our website that's fun. oh the junk box yeah yeah Yeah, and please please everybody i want to hear what you think of our show your ideas your thoughts your suggestions your anything um any insults for aaron yeah i would love that do you think sam named me asshole because i'm brown <clears throat> anyway, so yeah, um, especially if it's insulting to Aaron, I would love to hear it. It's fucked no, up. Go to our junk box. Let us know what you think about our show. Let us know, do you think it's fun? If you have any ideas, what you'd like to hear, um, just anything. Anything you have to say whatsoever, go to the junk box and let us know. All right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. That's it. Chuck, you wanna, anything you want to say? Last words? Last words? No, everybody out there, remember to think hard because you're thinking anyway. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the show. Hey, if you'd like to be a guest on Around the Real, please reach out to us at our website. That's www.cccentertainmentgroup.com. There you can send us a message. And if you're an artist or creative or just want to get on the show and start talking about a bunch of shit like we do, Please reach out to us and let us know. We'd love to have you. And uh, if you also need other realms to find us in, in this wonderful Silicon Valley of what we call the social media, we are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can find us all there. And we have a page on YouTube that we're just getting started as well. And also, if you do want to watch our feature film, you can find that on Amazon Prime right now. That movie is called The Outrider. It's our first major feature film that we did. We have a bunch more coming, but please watch that one. Let us know what you think. And anyway, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. we got more shorts coming for you, so talk to you soon.